lot of people like to say, well, those are just animal studies. Humans and mice right here. So a few weeks ago, I was talking to my uncle and he used to farm pigs. And he said that when they, when they fed pigs moldy grains, the pigs would literally either become infertile, have abortions, or go into estrus early, all kinds of fertility problems. So today, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about chemical abortions from artificial estrogens before we talk about other aspects of infertility. And we'll start with grains. We'll talk some about some pesticides, talk about soap, and then we'll end on this chemical called diethylstilbestrol, DES, which used to be prescribed by doctors. It's a crazy story. So let's start with the grains. I've got a paper here from 2012 in the Iranian Journal of Pharmaceutical Research from Iran. It's called Exposure Assessment of the Tehran Population in Iran to Xerolinone Mycotoxin. Myco, that means mold, mold toxin. Xerolinone, what is Xerolinone? We've talked about it before, mold estrogen. It's molds literally secrete this chemical, acts like estrogen in your body, extremely toxic because it throws off your natural hormone balance. What else does it do? ZEA, xerolinone, is a potent estrogenic metabolite in grains, the primary toxin, toxin causing infertility, abortion, and other breeding problems. That's, it's called chemical abortion. It's dangerous chemical, mold, mold estrogen, xerolinone. Let's talk about pesticide. Got a paper here from the Environmental Health Perspectives Journal, 2004, long time ago. A lot of these things have been known for a long time, but people aren't talking about them, so you may not have heard of this. This paper is called Low Dose Agrochemicals. Doesn't take much. Drink it in your water. You gotta filter the water. Charcoal filters. Buy organic. Low dose agrochemicals and lawn care pesticides induce developmental toxicity in murine pre-implantation embryos. Murine, mouse. All right, so these are actual animal studies. It says occupational exposures to pesticides may increase parental risk of infertility. All right, and adverse pregnancy outcomes such as spontaneous abortion, preterm delivery, and congenital anomalies. Spontaneous abortion. These are extreme things that are happening. And yeah, they're talking about occupational exposures, people that work with these chemicals all the time. But get this, less is known about the residential use of pesticides. That means just people throughout your neighborhood, maybe even including you. In the present study, we evaluate environmentally relevant low dose exposures to these pesticides. And they include atrazine, by the way. And again, this is in the context of chemical abortions, infertility. And so they definitely find major infertility problems with atrazine. That's the herbicide that acts like estrogen found in corn and some other grains. But let's move on to soaps, right? Now, just recently, they made triclosan illegal. Triclosan is in my top 10 list. Check on your soap ingredients. Make sure it's not in there because it's vicious stuff and this paper here is the main reason they made triclosan illegal but get this it's not it's not it's still used until next year so even though it's illegal companies are allowed to use it until next year and you see it frequently go into the go into the store look at the soap ingredients you'll see triclosan but this paper is an eye opener scientific reports this is a nature journal 2015 paper is called triclosan causes spontaneous abortion accompanied by decline of estrogen sulfotransferase activity in, in humans and mice a lot of people like to say well those are just animal studies humans and mice right here triclosan it starts off by saying an anti antibacterial agent that's why they put it in the soaps they've been doing this since 1970 by the way and in the next episode, we're going to talk about transgenerational inheritance. I, I just want to get to that because that's whew, shocking stuff. But 
It's been used since 1970. Triclosan is identified in serum and urine of humans. Of course, we're using it in our soaps. We're rubbing in our skin. It goes through the skin just like any other hormone. Here we show the level of, okay, they, sh they find high triclosan increases spontaneous abortions by 11.3 fold. These are chemical abortions. How does that occur? Well, this says that it's dose dependent. So the more you have, the more exposures you get, the more of these types of abortions and the more fetal death during these certain stage embryonic stages occur. And they see a decline of live fetal weight. And they find it's because of estrogenic properties, you know, that because it acts like estrogen, including enhancement of platelet aggregation. So it's causing some blood clotting, just general problems associated with estrogen. To, you know, altering your natural estrogen. So that's a scary thing. Avoid it, obviously. 2013, I've got a birth, this paper from the birth defects research about diethylstilbestrol. And I want to end with this one because this is another crazy story. Diethylstilbestrol deaths used to be prescribed by doctors professionally from 1940 to 1970. It was prescribed. It was professionally prescribed. It's kind of like the trans fat issue which I'm writing about right now in a book called Blubber Brain. And in other words, you know, it used to be thought of as a healthy thing, as a good thing. In this case, as a drug professionally prescribed. Trans fats, they, they touted those as good. People literally, I know a scientist who was literally laughed at when he started saying that trans fats are bad. This happens all the time. So let, let me show you this paper. Exposure to diethyl stilbestrol deaths during sensitive life stages, a legacy of heritable health effects. All right, this is kind of a preview for the next episode. So it says diethylstilbestrol is a potent estrogen mimic that was predominantly used from the 1940s to the 70s in hopes of preventing miscarriages. In pregnant women, they were giving this hormone, this artificial hormone, artificial estrogen to pregnant women. What happened? And by the way, they were doing this for a lot of years. All right. It caused a variety of birth-related adverse outcomes in their daughters, such as spontaneous abortion. Again, with the spontaneous abortion. Second trimester pregnancy loss, preterm delivery, stillbirth, and neonatal death. Additionally, children exposed to deaths in utero. That means when they were in the womb, the mother was taking these pills. These children suffer from sub or infertility and cancer of reproductive tissues. We've talked about cancer before, but let me show you the picture. They actually talk about the specific mechanism of how it causes breast cancer specifically, and it's through DNA, hypo or hypermethylation. That's epigenetics. That's inheritable stuff. This is, in other words, they're saying the cancer can be inherited, which is a little off topic, but you should know. I mean, there's a laundry list of problems with these. Here's, here's their laundry list. Infertility, spontaneous abortion, we mentioned. Ectopic pregnancy, loss of second trimester pregnancy, preterm delivery, preeclampsia, stillbirth, neonatal death, early menopause, breast cancer. It's a big list for a drug that doctors were prescribing to people. So, you know, use your common sense. Don't just assume that every drug that comes to market is good or that, you know, something unnatural is going to somehow make you healthy. Be really hyper skeptical of unnatural chemicals, especially if there's indications or research that show that it acts like estrogen in your body. And especially if you struggle with infertility.